Hey, so in today's video, I'll be showing you how to set up rainbow colored metallic flex. It's a bit tricky to set up, but essentially once you grasp the idea, it's super simple. And today I will show you how to do that. Hello everyone and welcome along to another episode, episode 614 and today I will be showing you how to set up rainbow colored metallic flakes. As you can see it's a very nice effect um, but it might be a bit tricky to set it up because you could just use it with a AI noise or something like that but then how do you get the nice rainbow colored effects? Um, yeah, I will be showing you how to set that up. But before, I just want to thank you for supporting me on all my social media pages. I started now doing more casual streams over on Twitch. You can find the link below to get to my channel over there. And also what I highly appreciate is if you would follow me on Instagram because over there you will get behind the scenes. I will be uploading images and everything so you can be part of the whole journey of the community I'm trying to build. And you will find more useful links in the description below which might help you. So without further ado, let's just jump into Maya and get this metallic flakes going. Okay, so I have a basic Maya scene set up. I've got this little metal object here which is like the front of a laptop essentially. And then I have a very <clears throat> basic uh, material assigned. It's like my typical 18% uh, gray. Uh, we can see that it's uh, we right now have a live render going on. And on the left here, you can see all my reference. So we are definitely trying to replicate this kind of um, rainbow flaky pattern of these uh, metal pieces. And as a, for a close up, you can see uh, you get these nice little colorful dots here. So um, I'll be showing you two approaches to do this. And I think both have its pros and cons. So the first thing is we want to create a cell noise shader. So AI, um, sorry, AI cell noise. And obviously any um, shader which supports this, um, like if you use a different application can work with this for sure. So I've got my shading engine and I'd like to just plug it directly into this to the output so I can actually see what I'm doing without needing to use isolate selected. Um, I just got used to this. It's sometimes a bit nicer to just have the output directly connected. So let's just move this to cell noise here. And this is the pattern we get. And let me try two different levels and let's just scale this maybe to 150 here. So we just get more detail. So we can already see now that we have flakes going on. And just based on the density, we can specify how many flakes we wanna see at one time, right? So this is the basic idea of this whole thing. So next up, we want to mix this with a different um, kind of metal, right? Because if we were just using this, we will get as a metallic object, we have had have this black, points in here and the metal is not really black it has some kind of value so what I like to do is uh, use the layer RGBA and I just plug that into my output here and now we can specify a base color so I like to use something like on this brown color which is like this more copper or like this more warmer color of metal and um, then I want to mix in a different color, right? So if I enable layer two, um, I want this, let's say I want to visualize the red. Um, I'm just changing the mode to overwrite. I'm not sure exactly what needs to be done here, but overwrite seems to work just fine. And let's say I just plug in the output here to the mix two. So now you can see we get the red flakes on top of this metal, right? So if I plug this now into my base color like that, and visualize it. This is right now the base look we get. So all we need to do in the shader now is change it to metalness one and maybe reduce the roughness. And now we can already see that we get a metal object with red flakes. So it's already close, but now comes the big question, how do we get the color in it? And the, the cool thing is the cell noise has this palette or palette option. Um, so what we can do, because, um, I, I can use this as a mask, which we'll be using. So I'm just duplicating this. So I'm just hitting um, Shift D to duplicate this. And now what I next want to do is create an AI ramp RGBA. It's essentially just a ramp where we can specify some colors. So what I want to do here, I just want to pick a rainbow spectrum. So I'm just picking um, all the colors we have at the top here. So I'm just creating these swatches for each of those um, colors like so. 
and then we are teal blue and we need magenta in the end so now we have the whole spectrum and next up what i want to do is get an uh, color correct after this just to have more control about the intensity and to, to um, top it all off i want to add a clamp so we're not going above one so this is now this would not collect uh, connect to the palette here or palette i keep saying it wrong and if i visualize the output for this you can already see now that we have each each flag picks a color from the spectrum, right? So this is how the palette works. And you can already now see we've got the nice colored effect. If we want more red tones, we need, just need to make sure we have more red in our little spectrum and we should get more of the reds. If you want less blue or whatever, we can actually remove it. So now it's more magenta. And you can see now just by doing this, we can we have quite a few, quite a lot of freedom to, to manipulate it. Um, so if I now connect the cell noise to my input two, let's just see what happens then. So right now it's red, right? So if I connect the out color to my slot uh, input two, we can now see we have the colored flags in there. And I added the color correct, so now we can push the colors for these. So if I expose it up, we should be able to see that we get way more exposure, like it's they are just more brighter going towards one, right? And then we can also increase saturation just to have even stronger flakes like this. And then this is essentially the first thing we need to do. Let's see how that looks like. And now we can see that we get our base metal and we get the, those flakes. I'm as exaggerating the scale of them now um, just to showcase what we are doing here. So this would be the, the first approach. And what, what, this hap um, what this is doing is it's, each um, flake has its fixed color. So even if I change the angle, the color does not change. So we have different ways of doing this, right? So one approach would be to just change like, like the time based on the curvature, for instance. So whenever, um, so the facing ratio. So when the facing ratio changes, we're just plugging it to the time. We can quickly visualize this. If I do a AI facing ratio um, and I just visualize this, I hope this works. Um, and if I look through the perspective camera, um, based on the angle, we should be seeing a different effect, right? So everything in the front is white, and then it fades off towards the, the back here. But we can try. I actually never tried that. So um, what I wanted to do, um, let's see, the RAM, can we actually offset it or something? Uh, let's see, there should be a option to just offset the color. So we can use a hue shift, for instance, right? This should do it as well. So if I have my color correct here, and I should say show all attributes, and I just do the hue shift with the out value of the facing ratio, let's see what we get now. Now I'm excited too. <laughs> let's see. Um, we're just let's just plug in the clamp here first. Okay. So now based on the angle, you can see now it changes, right? And this is one one thing you can do to just change the look, right? So now we using the camera facing ratio to change the color for each of those flakes. And the cool thing is if you have an animation or something is moving, um, you would see a, definitely a shift in color, which has which I think adds a really nice effect. And especially for these guitars, you know if like you move them, the, the color reflects back a different color, right? All right, so now we have this. Let's just move back to our main camera here. And obviously now nothing changes anymore, but if, if we would to move the camera, we would see different colors of the flakes. So as I said, this is the first approach I want to show you. And the next one would be to use the thin film. So if I use this thin film effect, and let's just plug this in directly here. Let's see what we get. Actually, let's just, before we do all this, let's just visualize this raw. So this is what the thin film looks like. And for the thickness on default, uh, if it's on zero, it just treats the surface as if, as if there would be no micro thickness differentiations. So for this to work, we just need a noise and we just plug in a luminance value to the thickness here. And all you can already see by just doing this that we get some variation. Let's just reduce the scale to 0.05 maybe. So it's a, a bit a broader in, in the movement. And then we can play with this, with those values here to max thickness. And if I go back again to perspective camera, <clears throat> you can now see we have a similar effect. Like based on the angle, you can now see that the color is changing, right? Which is also a very nice effect. And 
And this is just a different way of changing it. It's similar to what we just did with the facing ratio, but it's, it just looks a bit different. Um, and now this is connected to the input here. And if I visualize this, you can already see we have the rainbow pattern here on those flakes. It's very subtle, but you can see it. And it's a very similar effect to what you would see on the guitar here. So you see that this wavy pattern, right? And it's, it's changing based on the angle, which is fairly cool. So if I just hook this up now, we should have something. Obviously, um, depending on the angle, you see more or less. So what I always like to do, which I did on the top here as well, I'm just creating a color correct like this. And then I'm also creating an AI clamp. I just have the clamp again there just for a safety reason. So I'm, I'm not producing values above one. And the color goes back to this input here. And now we have a bit more control. So we can push the saturation. You can already see now um, it's even more saturated than before. And we can try to push the exposure. Um, obviously not too much because we don't want to clamp it. This is not clamping. Um, we just want, we still want to see the gradient, but something like this is pretty cool. And you can see now the nice um, colored effects already. So if I go back to my main camera and do this, you can now see this is now the other effect which we have. Obviously it's not a rainbow color like this would be because you can see each, each uh, flake has a different color, distinctively a different color. But for this effect, it's more like they share the same colors based on the angle. So it's two different shaders essentially uh, with a different look and feel. And obviously you want to see this nice depth of field. So I'll be just setting up my bokeh effect, or bokeh. It's always a, a big discussion what you want to call it. Um, so I have my focus point here. You can see I have my locator with my measurement tool, which is linked to my camera. And all we need to do now is go to diagnostics and uh, untake ignore depth of field. And now just by rendering like a small portion, you can now see we get these nice flakes. And now it's very easy to to just change the look and feel by just um, changing um, the input. So now we see the rainbow flakes. And let me just render a high quality image so you can see what we'd be doing here. Okay, so now we have the renders done. I rendered four different ones. So we have um, this more warm color. We have both different ideas. So one is just using the random color per flake. And then we have the thin film effect of this one. And then I just changed the metal color to be more metallic, like uh, like aluminum. Aluminum. So you can see now this is pretty much the effect. I added depth of field, and before I actually did start the render, I created a little um, AI noise range and a bump on it just to get a bit more surface um, irregularity. So let me show you how that looks. If I just uh, reduce uh, my render settings quickly to uh, maybe ten, and let's just go to diagnostics and disable depth of field just as you see what this bump map is doing. And you can see that it's it's just adding some kind of little bump on the surface, right? If you would feel it, it's, it's not super clean and there's some kind of roughness to it. All right, that sums up the video. I hope it was great. It was a bit shorter than usual because I just thought a nice technique is worth showing. Even though it's not a super long video, I just think it was good to show the technique and I showed you both techniques. And why don't you show me your renders you're doing with this and just tag me on your social media page. I would be happy to uh, check out your renders. So thank you again. And if you like what I do, leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So thank you guys very much and I see you in the next video.